Well, here we are back again with our negative space drawing in the background. It looked pretty good, but the wire, we've neglected it. It's kind of foggy and doesn't have definition, and it doesn't have emphasis. It really actually is the most important thing in the picture, but we've paid so much attention to the background, like I told you to, that it, it doesn't really show up. So we're going to use some colored pencils to bring it back a little bit. Here we have a colored pencil that is just simply broken off. That's going to have to be sharpened. This one broke off way down. This one, there isn't enough of it left that it's going to be of any use to us. This one's just about right. When we use the colored pencils, if we hold them like this and roll them a little bit as we use them, the tip um, stays nice and tippy. If we hold it like we do a regular pencil, the tip of it gets flat like this, and it gouges into the paper, and then, okay, so it gouges in. Let's say we're using one like this, and it doesn't make a mark, but the, but the, uh, it etches the paper. Then when we try to do something over the top of it, it shows. We can't ever really cover it up. I'm going to do this if I... So, it is important to keep your colored pencils in good condition. So take your sharpener and give it just a few turns. You don't want it really sharp. This is probably about sharp enough. You could get it a little sharper if you wanted. It doesn't take that long. If you're using your own colored pencils, it takes less long because you leave them in better condition. When you're the one, um, when you're using ones that have been used by a lot of other people, they tend to get kind of short, and then by the time you get there, you have to sharpen all 12 of them, and that gets to be a little discouraging. You know what? I sharpened that one just a little bit too much. That was four turns, and it was too much. So let's bring this baby back into some kind of shape. Now what you might be tempted to do is to take the darkest one you have, a black, and then just go ahead and... Uh, make really fat black outlines on it. This is not a black, this is a deep blue. But I'd like you to avoid doing that. Doing this is no different from what we did when we were shading cylinders and cubes. I want to give that impression of that overlapping so where one is on top of another. Make it just a little bit darker. And I really don't want sharp lines till maybe a little bit later if I had it for some expressive purpose. Okay, I'm just doing where they overlap now to make those stand out from each other. This one happens to be blue. Any one of the cool colors is really good for making things look like they go in. They create the effect of receding colors. Receding meaning going in. The other thing that gives the effect of receding colors is transparency. So we use watercolor, and I kept telling you, make it transparent, make it see-through, don't make it something that um, covers. And then when we put opaque color on top of it, the opaque color looks to be kind of almost floating on top of the surface. It's a really interesting effect. I like that effect. Here's another blue. Mix that in there. This still has a little bit of a scratchy effect. If I wanted this to really look rounded, then I would want to do this in a curve to mimic or clone the surface of the wire, because remember the wire was circular. A color like purple is going to be good. I don't appear to have a purple here, though, so I guess I'm not going to use purple. Um, if the colors get a little bit scratchy, you can blend them a little bit. I'm taking a white. And I'm not using the white to make it lighter. I'm using the white to blend it. That's a really nice effect. The color that's opposite of blue is orange. If I were to put some orange in there and not mix it up, I could get some really good effects too. Now my idea is that if I put kind of a shading, on 
the left and right of my cylinder that should give it kind of a rounded look. So I'm going to have you go ahead and just kind of work on that. When you finish, if you want to put some lines other places and put some hard edges, you can. But this is mostly about soft edges. Now, just because I said that um, blue and purple and those cool colors are going to be good for making it look rounded, making it look rounded, that doesn't mean you couldn't use warm colors. Um, see what you can come up with, and good luck.